two. Welcome to another episode of the Franchise Academy. Uh, we are a place for everything franchising, everything you ever wanted to know about franchising, never knew where to ask. Well, this is it. We cover everything from how to buy a franchise, how to sell a franchise, how to turn your business into a franchise. Today is really exciting because I have Eric Russell with me. Eric Russell wrote this awesome book called The Art of Selling Memberships. There it is. All right. <laughs> so The Art of Selling Memberships, right away you think about gyms, but this goes across many different industries, not just gyms. So Eric created this system on how to get people to pay you every month or whatever the membership uh, is for you. And it is a great, great system. So Eric, I want to welcome you to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. This is cool. I've been trying to get you on here for months. Finally happened. <laughs> and here we are. So, yeah, when I can do things from home, it's a lot easier to get me, you know, so. Well, there you go. Especially when you see the snow in the background. It's like, if I can stay here, we're going to get a deal done. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> And and I and I feel um, I feel honored to have you on because you have it, first of all, this is the fifth anniversary of your book. Yes, sir. So it's it, it, and for five years it was a number one bestseller, but five years later it's still in the top one hundred books on Amazon and not Kindle, but real paperbacks that people are buying. So yeah, like the actual copy. It's not some rinky dink little download, right? It's. The real deal. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing that I hesitated in writing this book for many years. Yeah. And then I decided to write it, put it out there. The thing went number one in the US in multiple categories. It went number one in Australia, Germany, all kinds of different places I've never even been to. I don't even know German. I have no idea how that happened. Um, India is another big seller. I, I they're actually India is second in sales. India. Isn't that so funny? Behind the US. Mind boggling to me. Like I said, I hesitated on writing this for so long because I just I failed English twice in high school. <laughs> so I'm not I I I'm no way, shape, or form did I consider myself a great writer. And the only reason I got through high school is because the the teachers who I didn't get the grades with wanted to have a talk with me because they were like, you know you're smarter than this. And I was like, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> and I sold them on passing me, even though I failed. And I told them, I promise you, I will make this up. I will do it next year. And da, da, da. they passed me on. And, and, you know, I hope I did them justice with the book. But five years later, to have this thing continue to sell, if you go on Amazon right now, you will see it's still a bestseller. Um, in fact, when I was out talking with you guys, we were we were like in the top 40 at that point. You do see some fluctuation with it here and there. Yeah, of course. Know, but I'm sure after we're done with this, it's going to go right back to number one. Again. Yeah, I hope so. For your sake, definitely want to help you push it because it is such a great book. Thanks. So how, how did you kind of, you know, so like you said, you're a salesperson since fourth grade, but how did you figure out memberships was a thing that you wanted to concentrate on? Well, I was kind of forced into it a little bit because my adopted father owned a gym. And uh -huh. so he had like this hybrid concept going on where it was like classes. It was, uh, you know, training, like physical training. You could do um, almost like personal training kind of stuff where it was it was more than just classes. But he taught martial arts and, you know, had all kinds of things going on. And it's funny because back then everybody said, yo, you got to concentrate on one thing. You're 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 stupid, basically, <laughs> you know, mixed martial arts wasn't a thing. Like you did one martial art. And if you did anything else, they, they said, you'd be confused if, if you ever had to defend yourself, like crazy stuff like that, that today, if you're not doing multiple things, you're a weirdo. Right. You know? And so anyway, he, I grew up in that gym. And when I was 15, he started kind of giving me some responsibilities to do sales. And then when I turned 18, he said, okay, I'm going to hook you up with this job. It's a hundred percent commission. And I'm like, I'm about to be rich. <laughs> I'm about to be rich. I'm selling something that everybody needs getting in shape. You know what I mean? Like this is going to be easy stuff. And I had, man, I couldn't sell a dang thing. I, it was, I couldn't believe it. Everybody has to think about it. 
<laughs> I had I had a lady come to me. I, doctor told her she's gonna die, <laughs> and she got to talk to somebody. She got to talk to her boyfriend. I'm like, what do you? What what more you need to know? You right. love to work out. You need to do this, and 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 you got to think about it still. I, you know, so I had two things that were motivating me. One, 100% commission, man. Zero mm -hmm. times 100 is zero. Yeah. <laughs> and back then, there was no there was no floor. Like you, not like it is in New York today, where you got to pay people at least minimum wage. Right. Back yeah. then, you didn't have to do that. You ate or you starved. That's it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was dealing with. And then the other piece to it is, this is my adopted father. This is a guy who chose me. This isn't a guy who had to do anything for me. <laughs> and I can't let him down. You uh, know what I mean? Like, I can't do that. So I had two things going for me that really got me focused on sales. And I said, I got to be good at this. I didn't come into the business as somebody who was a good technician, like a, like a good trainer or, a, or knew how to run a business or any of those things. I got into it on the sales side of it. And I had to get good on that side of it for those reasons. So yeah. my focus was on that. And I started le learning regular, you know, sales. I went, uh, you know, back then also, you know, you got the little tapes that you listen to, cassette tapes. Some of your younger audience is not even going to know what the hell those are. <laughs> right. There was nothing like what we're doing now. Like you had to get in the vehicle, go see somebody at a seminar, you know, like those kind right. of things. So I was doing that stuff, learning as much as I could and applying it to our business. And then I started doing a little bit better. And then I started to realize, hey, I got to tweak this regular sales process because it's it, our business is a little different. It's not like selling a car. Right. And so you got to look at these little pieces and you got to see how could I improve this and how could I make this better? And so that's what I did. And over the course of 30 years, that's what developed is this sales process. And then when I opened my own gyms, I was training everybody. I was hiring friends, the dumbest thing ever to do, by the way. So those <laughs> of you considering getting into business, only hire people that are absolutely qualified. Like don't hire the friends just because you you're friends. <laughs> but I, I figured I came from nothing, nothing, like less than nothing. And I, and I learned how to sell and I learned how to create an income for myself. So I'm like, I could take anybody. I could teach them this and they could be in the same boat I'm in. You know, yeah. and then they started getting successful with it. And I'm like, man, I think I'm onto something with this sales thing. This is, this is interesting to me. So when I was in seventh grade, I asked out the, my first girlfriend ever, and she shot me down and said no in front of all her friends. Yeah. And so that was it. You talk about fear of rejection. And then when I did my disc profile test years later, it said the last thing you should do is go into sales. Yeah, yeah. So I am, I have like this fear of rejection, which is kind of beyond, you know, the normal fear of rejection in, in my book anyway. What do you, you know, I think that's probably one of the biggest fears of, of people in sales. What could you tell people to help them get past this kind of fear? Well, look, fear in any, any sense, there's, there's, we're always going to be some kind of fear that we're dealing with. Um, and, and it could be rejection, believe it or not, fear of success. Right. I went through this a little bit. With, even with the fear of success, I had been successful. I have I sold millions of dollars and I had friends stealing from me. I had the government coming after me. No joke, man. Not like literally knocking on my door. Hey, you owe us 360000 in taxes. Mm -hmm. So to me, success started to become a negative thing. Even though I could buy things, I could go on trip. It's... There, there's all these things. But the thing is, when it comes to fear, you've got two choices. You face it or you run. Either way, you got to, both of those are going to present issues for you. Right. You got to choose the issue you want to deal with. Yep. Do you want to face it? And I learned this, that, that, you know, something about facing your fears is, um, it's one of these cliche things where they go, Oh, you gotta, you gotta face them, but it's, it's the truth. And when you do it once you start to realize, well, you know what? It's not that bad. 
Right. If you really look at it and see, there was a point in my life. So my mom got pregnant with me when she was um, still in high school and she wasn't done being a teenager. She wasn't done partying. And for a matter of fact, for most of my life, she was acting like a teenager. So we moved around a lot. We, I mean, I was in 13 different schools by the time I was in fifth grade. That's so, wow. yeah, I mean, I, we we're all over the place. Well, at one point when I was younger, um, obviously everything's when I was younger now, but uh, when I was younger, <laughs> I grew up in black neighborhoods. And so we moved around a lot and I was, I stood out like a sore thumb and these were poor neighborhoods. These weren't like, you know, uh, affluent areas or anything along those lines. She was just, you know, being wild and, and uh, being all over the place. But my point is I stood out like a sore thumb. And uh, initially I figured what I had to do was I had to kind of bow down when I got picked on and it just got worse and worse and worse. And it got to the point where I just couldn't even take it anymore. Right. And I said, okay, it's time to get crazy. Mm -hmm. And I did get crazy. I mean, I, I, when we would move, I, I, I realized that if I fought one time, the fights ended because nobody wanted to mess with this crazy white kid who will knock you in the head. They just wouldn't, that was the rep. So then when I would move schools, I had no rep. So I started becoming this dude who's like, okay, who's the best ass dude around here? I didn't wait for that. The fear was over now. I was, I was done with it in this. And, and so I would seek the dude out, boom, let's get in a fight. And what happened was this dude would be like, Hey, if anybody messes with this kid, they got to deal with me. Like he became my ally. It was weird, <laughs> man. So I had that mentality. And, and here's the thing. When you start to face that stuff, especially as it relates to sales. Now I know this is a, a pretty wild story compared to, down here to sales and you're going, well, man, if you went through that, it's easy for you to hear no in sales, but it's not, it's still not any easier. So what I did with the sales process is I got it away from the no. And, and you'll see in the process, what it is, is here's a recommendation I have for you. And that's what you're doing. You're, you're taking somebody who's already interested. You're not even in the conversation if they're not interested. And you're guiding them through little pieces. And when you hit the right combination in the right sequence, which is key in, in sales, it's key in franchising, it's key in any business. When you hit the right combination, the right sequence, it ends up being just a natural yes, mm -hmm. right? It's not a, well, you know, it, it just becomes a natural yes. But dealing with rejection and dealing with a no, it's just one of those things that you have to force yourself to face. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, you talk about in the book, the Lone Ranger who used silver bullets to disable his opponent before actually shooting them. But what yeah. is that, could you, could you share that, that? Well, look, that? the thing is we're not all, we're not the Lone Ranger. They're, they're, they're you know, you gotta, <laughs> it, the, the idea is this, you know, when you, start to dial in a process. And this is, this is something that that's, that's key. If you think about um, all of the things that you need to make a business successful, it's not one thing, but those systems might be one thing in it. Like in sales, it might be that one thing that you're, you're just missing a little bit. Right. And if you just miss that combination a little bit, you don't open the lock. And if you think about it, think about your business. Okay. When we start a business, we've got to have all these pieces in place. All of them. We got to have sales. We got to have marketing. We got to have operations. We got to have staffing. We got to have all of these. And then we've got to have the product that we're delivering or the service that we're delivering. All these different things, right? They all got to be, be working together. And eventually, if you start with no help, all on your own, you will figure it out. I told you, I'm here 30 years later. Right. This didn't, I didn't figure this out over in a weekend course and be like, Hey, here you go. <laughs> I wasn't like a guru who took, you know, a Facebook course and goes, Hey, I, I can help you in the business now. Cause I got my, my 10 hours of training in. this is years and years, <laughs> but you start to narrow this stuff down. And this is why I love franchising too, by the way, 
because a lot of these pieces are already in place. These so-called silver bullets that that you don't have to worry about figuring out. Right. Right. Yep. You think about combinations for a second. You know that three three numbers are about seven hundred and twenty different combinations. Yep. You could take three numbers and make about seven hundred twenty different combinations. So if you have three pieces that you're talking about, there's about 720 combinations you can put together to, before you figure out what works. Right, right. Now think about operations, sales, marketing, staffing, product or service. That's five. You know what, you know what it takes to get the right, com how many combinations five make? It's over 100,000. Wow. So if you're if you're looking at starting a business and you go to somebody and they got four of those pieces already squared away, you're you're way ahead of the game. Hmm. It doesn't mean it's the silver bullet though. It doesn't mean that you can just sit back and, and let it do its thing. You still got to put the work in. You right. still got to get through challenges. You know, like I said earlier, with dealing with with rejection or fear, it's not easy either way. You got to choose which one you're going to go with though. Absolutely. So you can actually go into like a single unit operation or into like a franchise company and do like their national convention and teach this system like in a workshop. Yeah, I do it all the time. I, I can do an hour presentation and start to finish. You can have it all squared away. And wow. there's five because because see what did I tell you earlier about there's all these pieces, right, that you got to deal with. Well, well, in sales, that one piece, there's steps you got to take. What are they? Well, I got to get the, I got to have a lead become an opportunity. Just because you got leads doesn't mean anything to me. What are you doing with them? Yep. Are they opportunities or are they just people you're calling and people showing up on your email list? Yeah. They're just suspects, not prospects. Exactly. So, so they got to be, you got to have a system for getting them to become an opportunity for you. Then once they become an opportunity, you got to have a system. You, you, you got to have the pieces in place that, that, get you the information so that you can make the right recommendation to them. Yep. Then you got to have the piece that's the right recommendation. Then you got to actually make the recommendation. And then hopefully you never get to step five, which is overcoming any sales obstacles that are in the way. Because mm -hmm. you did that on steps one through four. But think about that for a second. If there's five steps to that sales process and you're trying to figure out which ones go where and how, you got a hundred thousand different combinations you could put together before you figure out what works. Yeah. So it's not that it can't be done, but if you got a dude like me who spent 30 years tweaking these combinations and these sequences, and now there's something that works, pick it up, put it in play and, and, and watch what happens with it because that piece is figured out. Yeah. Right? No, no, so, we do reinvent the wheel. Right. Right. So what I can do in an hour would take you 30 years, 10 years, whatever. Maybe you're way smarter than me. I don't know. I got in a lot of fights as a kid. I got my head knocked around a little bit. You know, <laughs> I'm not the fastest learner on the planet. So maybe you can do it in 10 years, right? But yeah. it's going to take time to figure out those combinations. Now, if you come to me and say, hey, what's the combination? I can go, hey, Tom, here it is, man. Here's yeah. the pieces that you got to have in place. And not only can I give you the combinations from, from A to Z, but inside of each one of those steps, there's a combination you got to follow. And here's what that is. Right. Right. And so it cuts off a huge learning curve in that sense. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, as we said, obviously this works for gyms because they have memberships. What other kind of businesses do you think it'll work for or have you worked with that it, that it works for? Well, it works for everything, man. Like I, I've done uh, sales training for, um, software companies, website companies, website development companies. Um, I'm trying to think of stuff outside of actual um, uh, membership organizations. Obviously, majority of my business is membership-based organizations. Sure. And, and ultimately, every business could have a membership option on some level. Every single business. I don't care what it is. It can be, there can be a membership option to it. Um, I mean, even, you know, you think back in the day, you got like BJ Wholesale and Sam's Club. You got to be a member to, to shop there. Like that was crazy years ago. Right. Now it's like, you know, huge, huge business. 
So every business has, has the potential to be a membership organization. But outside of that, in the course of, of my sales career, I didn't stay 30 years dialed in on just gyms. You know, I, I moved around. I got jobs working for, you know, I worked for uh, Kraft Foods at one point. Matter of fact, that award right there behind is from Kraft Foods. I was, that's a sales leadership award I won. I was the youngest guy to ever be on that council. I got a diamond ring to go with it. That's right here. This bad boy. Nice. Okay. And it's the same principles. I would I would figure out, okay, who, and I was cold calling businesses and, and distributors who, you know, you, you know, you're you're going up against like I'm selling Maxwell House coffee to Greek diners. Okay. You, you, if you know anything about diners and you know anything about Greek diners, switching out coffee, like you, you, it ain't happening. Like our company literally is like, that isn't even a skew you should be talking to them about, <laughs> you know, like you need to, you need to be talking to them about Oscar Mayer bacon or something like forget about coffee, but coffee was the thing I loved. Mm -hmm. And I knew if, if, if I just, looked at these pieces, I could figure out a way to get in. And one of the ways that I got in is I got to know my customers so well that, first of all, I love diners, not hard for me to know them. I just eat there all the time. <laughs> but the thing is, I, I started even learning the language. I started learning Greek. Wow. And so I would go in there and I'd be like, hey, Takanate. And they're like, oh, and now I'm a friend. <laughs> now I'm, I'm one of them. And, and a lot of times, they would straight up ask me, are you Greek? Right. Because I kind of got the Greek look, you know, and, and I'm that talking, is, uh, even though it's a little, little weak. Yeah. And I would just tell them, look, I don't, I'm, I'm not real fluent, but we would do food shows. And we had this group called the Pangagorian group, which was a lot of different Greek diners that all kind of grouped together to get to, to, to maximize their buying power. They'd come to our booth. They'd be like, we only deal with him, only him. <laughs> he gives us the best deal, right? And so I was selling Maxwell House to Greek diners. And they were like, what are you doing? So I'm sitting here with the vice president of sales, the president of sales, this big corporation, having dinner. And then I realized the corporate world ain't for me because <laughs> I was the total black sheep of the, like, especially back then. You got, I'm in my 20s at that point. So I'm still a little wild. And, right. uh, you know, I wasn't sleeping at these things. I, I would stay up partying all night, come in the next morning, all hung over and <laughs> still getting the job done. You know, and they didn't like that because I was I wasn't fit in the corporate uh, right mold. Perfect. You know, yeah. and I understand it, you know, but net net. My point is that that process of going through these sales things and understanding, man, what got me what really got me in to those Greek diners? Was it, I had the best coffee on the planet? Was it, I knew, you know, uh, flavor profiles that, that I know what their customers want. And I did know those things, but that's not what got me in. What got me in was they were looking at me like I was them. And now I can make a recommendation that they can at least consider. Sounds like bonding and rapport, right? That's what it is. Yeah. And when you're and when you're when you're doing it on the next level, when you're asking questions of prospects, or you're or you're um, sitting down with somebody, and you're saying, "Hey, man, let me ask you something. You've been you've 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 tried to lose this weight in the past. We all have, <laughs> but you didn't give up. So that's awesome. You know, you're you're here again, trying again. But I gotta I gotta ask you something." What have you tried in the past and why didn't it work? Then you shut up and you let them tell you. And what they're going to tell you most of the time are the reasons of why they got to think about things, why they are going to hesitate. Right. Yep. That's what they're going to tell you. And that's going to help you sell them on the best recommendation. Right. Yep. So if I say to you, Tom, uh, what grade were you in seventh grade when you got shot down? What was yep. this? Seventh yeah. Grade. So seventh grade, man. So I gotta, I gotta ask you something about this. What happened? Why do you think that didn't work? Um, good question. I never analyzed it, but as I think about it now in this moment, 
maybe I was assuming that she would say yes. I didn't do any kind of homework to any recognizance to find out if if she actually did like me, if she would say yes. Um, so I just kind of went in like, you know, of course she's going to say yes. And she didn't. So what we got to do then, I'm coaching you now. Not that you need it, and you, but I'm just, we're just rewinding a little bit, right? Okay. Now I'm coaching. So what we got to do now, Tom, is we got to lay some groundwork before we go in there. Yep. We got to kind of feel it out. I'm not going to go in there and be like, hey, you want to date me? Because I don't even know where I sit with her. Right. So right. let's lay some groundwork. In it, other it, words, by asking you this stuff, I can figure out maybe what's a good solution. especially the maybe is going to be gone. You start asking me about fitness. I, I'm going to know exactly what your solution is. That's why you came to me. I'm an expert in that. Right. Right. So if a prospect, like a, you know, prospect comes to you, you're an expert in that, you know, exactly what they need, but you got to get them to put it on the table so that you can focus on that. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I kind of do the same thing when I match people to franchise opportunities, because I'm making suggestions, they're making decisions. And so I'm trying to get them to tell me wh what they're trying to accomplish. What, what's your goal? Like, how, why are you in this job and not in a business today? Because a business is always better. I don't care what you say. A business is always better. Yeah. Um, and, and so when they start laying that out, that gives me the path to follow, to find the right franchise that'll get them ultimately to where they want to go. Yeah. And that's the thing I love about what you do is – you literally are having people come into your, to your opportunities and you're saying, okay, I got this plethora of opportunities. Let's talk, let's do real talk here and let's find out what it is you like, what it is you don't like, what are some things that have, have you know, occurred in your life, so to speak, that you don't want to do, that you want to stay away from. You know, maybe, maybe you're going to deal with somebody who just, hates rejection to the point they can't even overcome it without some kind of psychiatric help right. okay that that level well maybe these people need to to be in the, the damn uh, oil change business where, where cars are driving in mm -hmm. you know and then even then you know i you, you drive in they're selling you stuff but uh i gotta tell them no i feel bad telling them no you know what i mean <laughs> like they're doing my car it's like oh you need a filter Give me everything. Whatever's on your list, give because I'm a sales guy. I don't want to tell them no. Right. Everything I, on your list, put it in my vehicle, okay? So Yep, yep, yep. that's what my, my wife says that about me. She's like, you're like the biggest sucker, man. You buy everything. Yeah, because <laughs> we, we could appreciate what they're doing, right? And we want, we want them to have at least one easy sale for the day. Yeah. You see me coming. I got the credit card taped to my head when I pull in there. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the thing is that that might be the business that's right for them. And you can, without having any kind of a bias, make the best recommendation. And when you can do that, that's when it's, it's, a, it's a great business to be in. And, and we do this in fitness because people don't come to us because it, it was some kind of sale. Right. They Absolutely. came to us because they, are, are, they truly want help. I mean, especially where I where I met you, which was Farrell's Extreme Body Shaping, Lance Farrell and the team over there in, in uh, Des Moines. Um, people go there because they literally need to do something or they're going to die. Yeah, essentially that's what it comes down to. So it's not one of those kind of gyms where you're hanging out trying to pick up, you know, your your next spouse. Yeah, it's really <laughs> serious. Um, you know, it's really it's life transformation studio i think is what lance calls it yeah it really is i mean it's one of those it's one of those places and it's not even really one of those it, it is it is a unique system that he has for getting results that i've never seen before and the results side of it it's yeah. pretty amazing some of the results that people get and um it does change lives man i mean That's it. look when you look better and you feel better and, and, and you're walking around with different kind of confidence that affects everything that affects your relationships that affects, a, you know, dates you go on that affects your job, yeah. everything, everything, you know? So can you call that girl, Debbie from seventh grade for me now? Yeah. And ask her <laughs> we, if she's, if she's watching, let's get her, let's get her on here. I think we could win her over. We just got to, you know, get some background info and, 
<laughs> go that route. <laughs> Funny stuff. Great stuff. But I, I really appreciate your insight here. And there's so much more. Um, and, and you're going to really find this in the book. So pick this up, The Art of Selling Memberships. It's on a little website called Amazon. I don't know if you ever heard of it. <laughs> um, and, and of course, on the website, your website is great. I love it. Thank you. Testimonials that are on there just sells the whole process. It's really, really well done. Um, so how could people get in touch with you, Eric? Um, Eric Charles Russell. Make sure you spell it with a K, E-R-I-K. Instagram, YouTube. I'm on all that stuff. I'm not a big social media guy. For Talking about coming out and facing your fears. I'm not afraid of, of the social media stuff, but I'm afraid of repeating myself over and over on there. Right. It, it, I just don't know, like, what more do I say? And, 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 and I, I'm, I'm kind of the anti-social social media guy. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting more content out there and, and people appreciate it. Cause it's like the date we talked about, right? I come up and say, Hey man, you need membership sales training. No, I don't. Who are you? Right. You, you, you know, look, you can't do it. What do I, who says you, but and then you put the meaty stuff out there. And they sort of go, Oh man, that freaking makes sense. Yep. Maybe I need to talk to this guy, you yep. know? And it's kind of like that. It, it helps warm the person up for that date. So you're not going in cold and all their friends are going, ah, he just asked her out and he got shut down, you know, yeah. and to joke forever. <laughs> oh my God. I have to go. I have to then call you hope court. you switch schools. You're like, Please get me out of this school, man. Everyone's picking on me. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I have to call my therapist now. You broke Yeah, me back. I know. <laughs> I brought back some bad memories, right? <laughs> some pain. It's good for well, you. Cool, man. man. Well, I, listen, I really appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. Um, we'll do more, you know. And lastly, um, so the book, they get in touch with you on the website. The website is just it's membership salesacademy.com. That's our, our online training portal. Um, sellingmemberships.com is, uh, is another site that we use to, 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 to market the book. Okay. Um, but net, net, you can reach out to me, Eric Charles Russell, on every social media channel that's out there. Um, or if you wanted to call, you could call me, 315-257-8300. Yeah, up in- uh, we, I'm old school, man. We got North phones here. You got a phone. Yeah, we got phones. We answer phones. We have phone conversations. I mean, it's it's wild what we're doing. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> a, bringing it back old school. Yep. Well, that's great stuff. And all that information will be on the website, thefranchiseacademy.com. So check out thefranchiseacademy.com for further information about Eric Russell and everything he's doing with memberships. And uh, keep your hat on. Stay warm. And uh, we will talk to you again real soon. Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you.